I'm Graham with graphlexparts.com and today we have most of a Houghton Ensign Reflex sitting here and we're going to be taking a look at the shutter system in it. It was sent in by a client to get the curtains replaced uh, when it was shipped in the entire thing was just a complete rotten mess and they are pretty rare to actually see a functioning shutter in. So why don't we take you a little closer, we're going to disassemble a little bit of this and show you kind of what makes it unique. The first thing we're going to see when we approach the camera is that there's kind of a minimal amount of stuff going on. We really just have one knob and the shutter release. And the way that this knob works is there's a big metal disc on this outer and that can push in when the shutter's all the way at the bottom. And that is how we change our shutter speeds. And what you'll notice that it does is, let's leave it at one width out, we'll wind it to the top, barely kind of wind it, we'll release it. Let's drop it down to slower speed, which would be a wider aperture. We'll wind it, we'll notice that it winds a bit further. Drop it. And so what is actually happening in here is this main outer gear is kind of setting the whole timing of the thing. And we can show, demonstrate that by, we're going to pull off this main screw. So what you can actually do is pull this whole thing off and as long as you understand that one of these is supposed to be facing up, because uh, if we pull this out and pull off the key, we're going to see that this is a square shaft right here. And this is the little just spring detent to hold that knob up, but we get this little secondary part. That's been bored out nice and square, and that holds onto the shaft. And as long as, we can take this whole thing apart, but as long as we have this part facing up at all times when the shutter's at the bottom, we know that this will be indexed correctly no matter what. Because all these detents actually correspond to gear teeth and the whole ratio of things for lifting these two apertures differently from each other. So, let's continue taking this apart. You can see that this now can just move freely. I've got most of the screws out of here to make our life a little bit easier. You'll want to kind of be careful with this and hang on to it. This is under spring tension. And it can jump and we can shear screw. Now, pull this off. Oop, one more. And we have an index dial and you can see it's got a, a cam and a little stop and that's how this this knows where to stop its rotation in the whole thing this is that that automatic indexing that the whole system does and th all this little guy is is a little lock pin so at the start of it when it's when it's at the bottom you can depress and it'll go into a little tiny hole here it's right there Oop. And that's its little spring and so that can kind of go in and out and so when we put this whole thing to get back together, we're gonna have to make sure that this is lined up at the start when we put the whole plate on. Otherwise it physically won't be able to stack and go down and, and screw in. So we'll notice that this main gear here can wind as far as it kind of really wants to without any of the indexing stuff on it anymore. And what's really, lock that down. What the cool part is, we have a little bit of a disconnector existing in here. And that is, Pop this on really quick, just to help us get a little bit of leverage on this guy. So we gotta go to the total end of it. And you'll notice this lever here just engaged all the way, and that'll let us go open close. But if we go right before it, and we only partially engage that disconnector, we'll get a double depress for the T time setting. And that's kind of how that deal works with all of this. Now, let's actually kind of see what's what's trying to happen here. And I haven't taken this back off yet because that's actually part of what's going on is this metal rib is pushing against this back in a couple different parts. And that's really integral for what's happening. Because we slip this back off, you'll see there's kind of nothing, nothing really, it's just a stamped piece of metal. That's all it is. But the big part here is we have this rib, this metal one, and when we wind our shutter up, that's going to make it to the top of its travel. And just inside of this, at the right angle, I'm going to wind past. And what you just saw a blip, this is the top curtain releasing. And it's going to continue winding. And if we see this, it's going to shrug a little bit. We can actually pull him down and pull him back up to the top. And that's because this is only friction on this system. This rib is actually mechanical. It's, it's part of what's allowing the spacing here. And these are two different materials that I've had to put in this shutter too in order for the system to work. So, I can fire, see it do its whole thing. And at the bottom, 
but we'll see, is there's actually a little brass in the camera there. A little brass piece. You don't even see it. it's been scraping the curtain up a little bit here. There's this little brass piece, and that is the stop for the rib. So the rib's not going to wind back around, and actually you can induce a jam, and you can shove it back there, and it will, at this point, then refuse to carry the lower curtain. Whereas if we let it go, drop it down, we can wind it then, and it will pick up along with it. We can still shrug it off, you know? It's, it's a friction-based system, and that's kind of where the reliability just issues start to come in, is these two, the, the two tension rollers in here, depend on having tensions that agree with each other. The, the ribbon tension needs to be higher than the ribs tension because it needs to be able to pull them through, but the rib and lower curtains tension needs to be just high enough that they want to cling together. <laughs> so if it's, if it's too loose, it actually won't wind it. Uh, you'll, you'll induce other sorts of jams um, where we'll, we'll fire this and at the same time, kind of make it do its thing. Now this looks more gruesome than it really is, but when you're the one installing the curtain in these, it's uh, you know how much stress they can take. Let's pop this up really quick. Actually, that that's what the the, the usual jam looks like. It will. The, the curtain, because the ribbons themselves, because what they're doing, if you can see this too, the ribbons are using this primary roller as their idler roller. So they're running against this at the same time. It has to have just enough friction to keep the system together, but just light enough friction to let this slip past on, on this brass here and there. It's a little wild. And so if the curtain is pulled too quickly by the ribbons, the curtain itself won't have time to actually pull all the way in and, and retract properly. And what you'll get is a really funky jam where it folds the curtain underneath. And then usually what happens, and this is usually with the back on, it will it will hold this whole piece together. And you'll go to wind it and you'll feel that it's, it's not pulling the following curtain. But usually, you can also get it to work itself right out. So it's not a system where it will really catastrophically fail. It just has some weird jams and failure points that it can kind of get itself into. So just to kind of reiterate how this, this shutter system was working, is this lower rib is being held just a little bit forward, and it's got a bend in it, where it's going to grab onto the top rib. And we can wind this, this to the top. And then to prove to you, I got a little bit of tape. And we're going to just some tape down here. And I'm just going to show that this is actually winding. Because this main curtain has been glued to the, to the lower tension roller at its base point to keep it from extending up, to keep it from winding itself into the top. But the more that we continue winding this, the ribbons will continue to pull through and that'll continue to wind. And then once we're at whatever desired spot, this is holding just enough tension that it's not going to let this rib slip all the way back down. It's going to let them carry together as one fluid unit. And without the back on, it'll jam itself and it'll suck the roller back in. And that's why this exists, is we're gonna put this on upside down just because uh, this, this quick lock for the back style on this camera works for calibration technique, if you know when you're playing around with this. Lock it back together and it holds that rib a little bit forwards. They cling together, draws to the top, the ribbons continue to go. We can actually kind of see this bounce around as, it, as it's skipping off, trying to hold against that roller. It works. Oh, and the, the mirror side of things, if it's not a pair, is manually driven mirror. Unlike Graflex, where it's auto diaphragming, where everything's cocked under your spring tension and you release one static passive lever and everything fires in conjunction, this you're physically raising the mirror up to that trigger point and it will lock the mirror in its upward position until the end. So, another potential failure point is that the mirror doesn't. The, the shutter's not pulling all the way down. It, it, it's off by one tooth. That's, that's how finite some of this gets. So if, if it doesn't hit that last tooth, it's not going to re-engage. 
because it's it's engaging a mirror disconnect or keeping the mirror at the top. But if it does, if the shutter doesn't fire all the way to the end properly, like let's say your hands against it, maybe and you you add a little, you do drag to it, um, it won't be able to trigger off the disconnector to actually let the mirror down. So that's one of the other sort of failure points with this. But there's really nothing super crucial going on, especially if this is a system where I can literally put this back together. It's it's really one of the the, the few SLR cameras that you can actually kind of field strip. Put that back on. Drop a couple screws in. Jump loose. Make sure the bottom bottom left. Oh, you'll also notice I've got a little bit of a felt in here, and that is not stock. That is that is an addition to the system that I have done because there is a very obvious gap. It doesn't even matter where this one I was at, because as long as we remember from the start of this, if you keep this straight up with its text at this kind of like three degree angle that it's at, you pop that on, doesn't matter where, where this bottom disc is at yet, because this is controlling all the indexing. We'll pop our little spring clip back on, add our key, put on our little flat screw, come on. Thing together, we'll see it snugs up. Now it's it's indexable. So one to the top, let her go, and we can actually drop it down to B. We'll prove that B works, and then we'll do T. T works. Let's crank her up to one one thousandth. Boom, and that's kind of really how simple these are to put together. When it comes to taking things apart, obviously it's a little bit of different process to get the curtains on the roller, make sure everything's the exact right system. And to get these tensions to play perfectly with each other is probably the biggest hurdle of this, but it's a really odd system. I think it's really unique. It's definitely kind of one of the ones where you, you see a company trying to get around some weird patents in a, in a kind of innovative way. Well, hopefully what I demonstrated here is kind of indicative of why these cameras aren't really seen being used anymore. Um, why there probably are really not that many of these that actually function these days, let alone any of the other cousins of, of British or European SLRs where you have all these funky two curtain systems that exist. It seems like there's all these patent feuds. And then you have other alternate camera systems like Graflex where you can have a camera that's 115 years old and it still runs. But, uh, Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something. If you didn't, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, can't thank you enough for all the time. Uh, stay tuned for more videos of odd things like this. So, thanks.